Hey everybody and welcome back to Art à la carte. Yes, it is another video where I open up a smart art box, which if you don't know what this is, it's a monthly art subscription that sends you art supplies each month based around a theme or a certain art project, which I find is really fun and challenging. And a lot of these boxes contain art projects that without them, I would have never attempted these supplies myself. Now, the theme for this month's art project was Italian Fresco, which if you don't know what that is, I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the video. But first, let me tell you the supplies that came in this box. So first thing they sent was a couple of mini canvases, a burlap sheet, some plaster, a palette and painting knives, which is cool because I don't have any of that, a 10 pack of brushes, and the big thing that they sent for this box was a 24 set of acrylic paints, which if you've never done painting before, this is a great set to start off with. If you would have asked me to explain Italian fresco before this box, I really don't think I could have given you a very good answer. I'm wondering, how do you even Italian fresco? It sounds like a drink. I, I, I want to go to Starbucks and say, hey, give me an Italian fresco. If you're like me and you don't know what that means, they do have a very informative pamphlet that goes through all the art supplies and the history of the art, plus step-by-step -step instructions to create your piece. So after reading through this, I began my journey to create my very first Italian fresco piece. The first thing I wanted to do was cut my burlap in half because I wanted to try this two different times. And they gave me a long piece of burlap, so instead of doing one long piece, I decided to do two square pieces. Then I began to mix my plaster, which is two parts plaster powder and one part water. And you want to mix that up until you get the consistency of, I would say, hummus. If you get that consistency, you're doing pretty good. After the plaster is mixed up, you want to smear that all over your burlap, making sure you have a messy mat underneath or some newspaper so it doesn't go everywhere. Now comes the time you want to let it dry a little bit, about 10 to 15 minutes. During this time, I went ahead and sketched up some ideas that I had for my painting on a scratch piece of paper. After I got my sketch done, I began to choose out my color palette. I knew I wasn't going to use every single one of these 24 colors, but I wanted to get the ones that I wanted to use ready to go. Now again, these are acrylic paints, which come in really nice little tubes. A trick with any kind of tube paint like this that you have to open up is to not squeeze the tube before you actually puncture the seal. It is going to cause your paint to explode everywhere. So take the tubes out carefully and then use the little pointed end at the end of the cap to puncture the little seal and open up your paint. I decided that I wanted to paint a peacock in kind of this bush or tree. So I used a lot of my blues and greens, a few browns and a couple of orangish yellows and things like that. Now moving back to the plaster, once it is dry to the touch, like you can touch it and you're not making any fingerprints into it, but it's still really kind of cold to the touch, you know, it's not fully dry, you can begin to transfer your drawing onto the plaster. I don't think I waited long enough. Um, because I can actually scratch into the plaster very easily with my palette knife and I decided that would be better than trying to draw on top of it with a pencil. So I just kind of etched in my drawing. I wasn't sure if I was going to like how that looked, but I wanted to test it out, see what would happen. And that's the biggest thing I can tell you guys. If you ever try any new art medium and you've never had any experience with it before, is it's okay to make mistakes, to mess up, just try things, see what happens. Uh, of course, it's good to read instructions, maybe watch a few tutorial videos on something to, so you kind of have an idea of what the art supply does. But when push comes to shove, if you mess up, it's not that big of a deal. You learn a lot from it. So I decided let's just see what would happen if I kind of scratched in my design into the actual plaster. Now that I'm ready to lay in my paint, the first thing I want to do is to put in a light color background. So I mixed in some kind of orangish pinks and yellows and then began to paint in my actual peacock. I don't do a lot of painting with acrylics. I'm more of a watercolor girl myself. And so every time I go back to acrylics, I keep thinking to myself, why don't I paint with acrylics more? They're so much fun. The colors just lay so beautifully on top of each other. They're so opaque. And I have to admit, I had a ton of fun painting this peacock. Now, this isn't going to be a tutorial on how to draw a peacock. 
don't think so, I have one on drawing a peacock. So if that's one you'd like to see, let me know in the comment section below. Now, according to the awesome little information pamphlet that I received inside my box, this technique involves painting over freshly laid or wet lime plaster that allows the colors to bond with the plaster, creating a painting that gives the colors great permanence and resistance to aging. The famous artist Michelangelo himself used this technique in several of his paintings. Now, in this box, they did send a pound of plaster, so there is a lot to work with here. and. After carving in the initial design into my first picture, I decided instead of carving it in, could I build it up? So on the second piece of burlap that I burlap, burlap, burlap that I had, I decided to again get messy, make mistakes, and try to see if I could kind of mold a figure into that and then kind of carve out the details. So I was going to originally go with kind of this mermaid head and kind of have her hair flowing around about her. Didn't work. It kind of morphed into a tree fairy. Oh goodness, what is that? Is that a naiad or a dryad? I can't even remember. Let me know in the comments which one is a naiad and which one is a dryad. I consider it my grandmother willow piece and if you know where the grandmother willow comes from so you guys get some extra nerd bonus points i i liked the technique the plaster dried out a little too quickly for me to do a lot of carving so it didn't work out as well as i had hoped but it was fun to try out speaking of trying out if you've ever done any fresco paintings yourself make sure to share them with me on my social media i'll leave links to my instagram twitter facebook you can tag me in those photos i'd love to see them and again if you're interested in trying out the smart art box i'll leave a link to their website in the description box below well thank you guys so much for hanging out with me i hope you learned something new because i definitely did so as always god bless you guys thanks for hanging out with me and we'll see you next time Bye bye